good morning. Uh, it's been a very busy week uh, during Twin Cities Startup Week 2021. It's been great to see the, the energy, that the sessions have been so inspiring. So thank you for joining us today uh, for this session. I am pleased uh, to be joined along with my colleagues from DEED, the Department of Employment and Economic Development. I'm Neela Molgard, the Executive Director of Launch Minnesota. Launch Minnesota empowers and elevates Minnesota's innovation ecosystem. We connect, convene, and catalyze entrepreneurial efforts across the state by bringing together public and private organizations from diverse sectors and industries. We want Minnesota to be the best place to start and scale new ventures by providing access to capital, statewide connectivity, and expertise. The model that you see on the screen shows the holistic approach of Launch Minnesota. The startups, the innovators, entrepreneurs are at the core, but all of these sectors are critical to build a strong and vibrant innovation ecosystem. And I'm trying to nav navigate to the next <laughs> slide. All right, Launch Minnesota is serving as that front door, a central touch point that is bringing these sectors together to start, support, and scale new businesses and technologies. We want to help navigate this entrepreneurial journey, your entrepreneurial journey, and make it easier for you. So today, the programs that you're going to hear about, the contacts and the individuals that you're going to meet, everything can be found on this page of our website. So if you go to launchminnesota.org, go under capital and additional deed programs. All the links are here for you to help uh, your navigation. As you know, uh, DEED serves all stages of businesses. We have a wide spectrum of financing programs and resources. Today, my colleagues will be sharing about some of these programs. You can see those circled in red, those that are really helping uh, startups and entrepreneurs at that concept formation, validation, and launch stage. Today, we're gonna kick it off uh, with the Launch Minnesota Innovation Grants Program. Uh, really proud that in under two years, uh, with the help of this team that you'll meet, we have deployed over $3 million to 104 startups, and the momentum of this funding has helped them raise private dollars, hired people, and 100% of our grantees that we survey at their six-month progress reports have said that their business has propelled forward. So thrilled about the progress that we've had with this grant program. And now I have the honor of introducing the individual that manages these grants, uh, my colleague Nyla, the grant manager for in uh, Launch Minnesota. Nyla, take it away. Thank you, Nyla. Um, as Nyla mentioned, we've had uh, numerous, over 100 grant contracts that we were able to set up during the first two years of Launch Minnesota. And I'm the grant manager. So just kind of an, an overview. Um, that first year, it was a busy, busy year. And now that we are uh, re-upped, if you will, the legislature saw and, um, that the impact was really great and that there was a need. And so they voted to provide funding for another biennium or another two years. And so we have $3 million to provide to our entrepreneurs and our business startup businesses out there. And the legislature has decided to kind of lean in to the adjective of innovative. So we expanded that a little bit. So innovative means an innovative product, technology, or business model. So we really want to subscribe to that and emphasize that and support businesses that are innovative in, in all of those ways. So um, just to talk about, just a, briefly about the eligibility for Launch Minnesota, you need to have headquarters and operations in Minnesota. And uh, your business needs to be in operation for 10 years or less and not have generated more than a million dollars in revenue during that period of time. So um, coming up for this particular biennium, we've changed just a little bit as far as the categories that we're offering our grants in. So we have our business operation grants and our SBIR, STTR matching grants. The business operation grants, as you can see here, uh, go up to 35 thousand dollars and 
our grant is set up just a little bit differently because it is a reimbursement grant. And so for every dollar that you spend, we reimburse you 50 cents. So 50, the state matches 50 cents for each dollar spent on eligible expenses. Those eligible expenses means that your money was spent with a Minnesota vendor. We definitely have to keep that money in Minnesota so we can continue to build that economy. And we look at the three different categories. When you are funded, there's three areas that we would like you to spend your money in. And of course, you can set up your own budget once you've been chosen. Uh, uh, research and development here, you can see the different areas that fall into that category. Uh, direct business expenses, rent, equipment, supplies, those, some, those are things that are usually not really covered uh, in my experience as being a grant manager. Those basic everyday operational things are difficult to find funding to support. And then technical assistance and services. And so you can purchase any type of assistance that you might need for development of who you are as a business. So your budget can be uh, any one of these categories or a combination of all three. And then our second category is the SBIR STTR matching grant. And this is dispersed on a formula based um, category. And it's, it is formula based on the amount of funding that you receive from the feds or the contract that you have with the feds. And so you need to be registered as a SBIR program client, uh, first of all, you also need to have a contract with the feds, uh, with a federal agency. And um, once you show us that you have received your first disbursement from that particular contract, then we can reimburse you or not reimburse you. We, we provide for you the funding for that match. And those are in categories based on the amount of funding that you've received. Now, with this, it's an either or. So this year, the legislature added phase one to the category. Last year, it was just phase two. So you can either be a phase one and you'll get funding up to 35,000 or a phase two with a maximum up to 50,000. And again, that's contingent on the, it's a formula based on the amount of funding that you have for your federal contract. So there you go. We've got some opportunities open to you. And the other piece I just want to underscore is that any startup is eligible to receive one grant per category per biennium. And a biennium is two fiscal years. So we are going from July 1st of 2021 to June 30th of 2023. So you can have basically two grants. One would be a business operation grant and one would be an SBI or STTR grant. So there we have those dollars waiting for you. So I hope to see your application, come across my desk and be able to set up a contract for you. So Neela, I'll turn that back over to you. Thank you. And now we're going to talk about the angel tax credit. Sarah? What's that? Are you hearing the echo or is it? Hear the echo. Echo? but we can hear you over the video fine. Okay, so the Angel Tax Credit Program is a little different, it's not a grant. It is um, a, a tax credit that angel investors receive when they invest in businesses in Minnesota. Um, to be a qualifying business in the Angel Tax Credit Program, businesses have to be headquartered in Minnesota, have to have 51% or more of their employees, and their wages in Minnesota, that they, they are required to pay um, 175% or more minimum wage requirement uh, of a poverty wage requirement. And they have to have not received more than $4 million in previous investments. Um, and the major other component that they have to meet is that they have to be a high tech business. Um, investors, in order to qualify, angel investors need to be a natural person. They need to be an accredited inv uh, investor, and they need to not be a principal or a person who owns more than 20% of the business. Investors can be um, both individuals or they can be a fund member. So a fund, I'm sorry, or a fund. 
if you if an investor is a fund, they need to have three members who are natural persons, and um, the minimum investment that they need to make is thirty thousand dollars. A minimum investment that a an, an individual investor needs to make is ten thousand dollars, or seventy five hundred for a business that is in a um, that is a women owned or minority owned or veteran owned business. Investors can be from Minnesota or out of state. Uh, the way that they receive their credit is after they make after they go through our program. Well, I'll start from the beginning. How participants, how um, businesses and investors can participate in the program. Businesses and investors and funds each need to be certified to participate in the program. Once they're certified to participate in the program, they submit credit allocation applications, which identify when they're going to make the investment. And after we review and approve those investment, the credit allocation applications, they go ahead and make the investment. And then they submit to us proof that they made the investment. And at the end of the year, they file an annual report with us and we issue the investors credit, um, credit certifications. And they use those to file their individual income tax returns. The investors will claim their credit on the individual income tax returns. Even if the investor is not a Minnesota um, resident, they would file a Minnesota individual income tax return and the credit is 100% refundable. Um, I just want to give a, a few facts also about how many businesses are certified. Well, first of all, the um, our program in 2021 started with 10 million and 5 million was for all of the general population of businesses. And the other 5 million is reserved for women and minority and businesses that are located in greater Minnesota. Um, as of yesterday, we had 2.4 that remains in the program and that is reserved for the women, minority and greater Minnesota. And if that is not used by the end of the month here, we'll be releasing that back out to the general population um, on October 1st. And then in 2022, we have another 5 million that we will have for uh, the year 2022 and two and a half will be used for the general, general businesses and two and a half will be used for reserve, reserved for um, minority women owned businesses in greater Minnesota. Um, as of yesterday, we have in our 2021 program, we've had 132 businesses certified. We've had 399 investors certified and 19 funds certified in our 2021 um, funds that are still remaining, like I said, are 2.4 million. Thank you, Sarah. I just want to add clarification to some that are listening, though, that the innovation grants are on fis our fiscal calendar, which is July to June, and the angel tax credit is our is the calendar year. Um, and so just to add some further clarification there, and I, my challenge has been this entire year to not have any uh, dollars left in, uh, for our targeted founders in the angel tax credit. So we have, a, you know, another week to deploy 2.4 million. So those entrepreneurs on the call or investors, it's an incredible opportunity to be able to, to deploy some risk capital to some startups that really need this. Next, we're gonna discuss, um, let's get to the next slide here, the Emerging Entrepreneur Loan Program. And we have a senior loan officer, Drew, that's gonna walk us through this program. Drew? Good morning. Um, the Emerging Entrepreneur Loan Program is, uh, unlike the last couple of programs we've discussed, not uh, inherently focused on innovative businesses, uh, but will serve small businesses um, across uh, most industries. The uh, program is also not uh, funded directly by, by applying through DEED. 
It's a partnership between Deed and uh, 26 lending partners across the state that are all nonprofit organizations that have existing um, small business lending programs. And um, most of them also provide technical assistance to small businesses. This program, uh, the funds are specifically available to small businesses that um, are owned by owned and operated by individuals who are in certain targeted populations that have traditionally had difficulty accessing financing. So that would be um, individuals who are minorities as defined by the federal um, federal code, uh, women, veterans, uh, individuals who are disabled and individuals who are low income based on their county of residence and family size. Uh, as I mentioned, this program really does run through the lenders. So all application is made directly to uh, an approved lender. And then uh, even if they do approve a loan for the business, they may or may not use this funding source, but it is uh, an incentive for, for lending to those targeted groups. Um, all of the lenders are have community focused missions. Uh, some of them have specific demographic groups that they target, uh, including immigrants, uh, women, and some of them are focused on um, certain types of lending, certain industries, uh, and then different geographies across the state of Minnesota. The program has lenders who are um, focused on lending in all geographic regions of Minnesota, except for a few counties in West Central Minnesota. Um, Uh, in order to be eligible for the loans, uh, as I mentioned, the companies have to be owned and operated uh, by at least one individual, although you can cumulatively own a company um, that is makes it majority owned and operated by one of the target groups. Deeds portion of the loan is 5000 to 150000 though certainly um, the program has been used for projects that are uh, larger, up to $3 million, I think, is our largest one. Uh, there is a matching funds requirement that there be private funds put into the uh, into the project that is waived for companies that uh, count as beginning microenterprises. And so that is probably the majority of um, businesses that would be interested today. <clears throat> Uh, there are certain restrictions on retail businesses and uh, no passive real estate is allowed. There has to be an operating company that would be um, occupying any real estate funded through the program. Beginning microenterprises are defined by the program as uh, operating less than two years and having fewer than five employees. And those loans, uh, the match is waived, but they also have lower limits uh, and those loans can go up to 35,000 or 5,000, sorry, 50,000, depending on what part of the state they're located in. Um, just a little history, the program made its first uh, loan in March of 2017 and is uh, has so far funded uh, about $5.7 million to, through 200 transactions. Um, the majority of the loans have gone to um, minority owned and women owned businesses with about um, even distribution of funds between Greater Minnesota and the Metro. A list of the lenders is available on our website and there are also some uh, contact information there to get in touch to get a referral to uh, an appropriate lender since there are more than 20 of them in the program. And that is, uh, I think, about what I have. Thanks. Thank you, Drew. We are now on to a couple more programs. And Chin Wei, another senior loan uh, manager, will will be able to talk through these programs. Chin Wei. Good morning. The Minnesota Reservists and Veterans Loan Program was a one-time appropriation by the legislatures in 2008. And the program is specifically for veterans 
and it's for those veterans that were discharged after 9-11. And it's for startups and also for a veteran who is called up for duty and they're running a business and they want to have the business continue, <clears throat> they can use the loan funds to support that business or for a veteran who is starting a brand new business. There was additional funds allocated to the program in 2018, and that allowed us to be able to lend more funds to the veterans after we ran out of money and had so many people on a waiting list. So it was nice to have additional funding into the program. And this is a direct loan program to veterans. So if you're interested in borrowing those funds, you actually apply directly to DEED and the funds um, get sent directly to you from DEED. It's up to $20,000 loan. You can borrow from $5,000 to $20,000. It's interest-free for the life of the loan, but you have to pay back principal only. And for the first 18 months, there's no payment. But after that 18 months, you have three years to pay back that principal for $556 a month. And one of the requirements is to have a full application completed we used to have that application on our website, <clears throat> but because of limited funding at the time, we decided to pull it back because we were getting so many applications. So if you want to apply, you have to actually email us and request for the application. And our contact information is on the website. And when you apply, along with the application, we do require a copy of your DD-214 to verify that you are honorably discharged. We do need a copy of your business plan if you're already in business, <clears throat> you still have to prepare a business plan. If you're a new business owner, we still want to see that you have a plan for your business. We also do need your historical financial statement. If you've been in business for a couple of years, we want to see how the business is doing and how the funding will uh, help support the business. If you are um, starting up a brand new business, we want to see projections for the business. Where do you see that business going in the next two to three, four years? Also, we do need a copy of your credit report. And um, if you don't have a, a, a credit report directly from your lender or lending institution that you work with, you can actually go to government free credit report website and pull your credit report for free. And that will be part of the whole application process. And when we get all those documents, we underwrite your loan internally and based on the business viability and the information you've provided, we will determine what amount you will qualify for from that five to $20,000. And after the underwriting process, the funds get sent out to you and you start um, your business and you don't have to do any repayment after that for that first 18 months. Again, this is targeted only to veterans discharged after 9-11. And if you have any questions about the program, you can always email me directly. My contact information is on the website and um, I'll be happy to answer any question you have. But it's a straight, simple uh, program that is direct loan from, from DEED. The other program that I'm going to talk about is the Minnesota Indian Business Loan Program. And this is a loan program that lends money to the 11 federally recognized Minnesota-based tribes. You have to be a registered member of one of those tribes in order to qualify for this program. And it does fund startups, um, existing businesses, and the program works to support all Indian-owned businesses. That business can be located in the tribe or outside the tribe, as long as it's a state-based, uh, Minnesota state-based business, you do get funding to, to uh, support your business. The way we have this set up is that you actually work directly with those tribes. Each of those tribes do have their contact person, the person that you can work with to help you set up the application. And DEED does all the monitoring of the program. But if for any reason you don't have a direct contact with the 11 tribes, um, you can actually reach out to our colleague, Tom Washer, who internally administers the program for DEED. And he will work with you to help you, guide you on what information you will need to get the, 
the loan program set up. And that's all I have for today for these two programs. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on the veteran program or reach out to Tom Washer or go to our website. All this information, like Neela mentioned earlier, is all on our website with our contact and we'll be happy to get you through it. Thank you. Thank you, Chin Wei. great information. I just wanna pause uh, before we go to some of the other resources that are provided by DEED, if there's any questions from any of the attendees. We welcome you to use the chat and we'll also spend some time at the end of the session for questions, but if there was anything that you needed clarification about at this point, we welcome, we welcome questions. Okay. Well, seeing that there's none at the moment, I will continue. So you, you just learned about a, a handful of our financing options and programs that we host through Mindeed and, and through our partners across the state. We also provide resources to help those businesses start and scale. One thing that we implemented uh, in March of 2020, so impeccable timing, uh, was the Launch Minnesota Network. We have we had $500,000 uh, in grants to deploy to entrepreneurial support organizations that, that provide the know-how to startups to succeed. And so what we did in this grant was asked organizations to look across their region, you know, outside of their organization, outside of their city, to really leverage the strengths of others in that region to help propel those businesses forward. So really proud to report that even during a global pandemic, organizations worked together. We have all six regions represented. We have eight hubs, uh, one being the University of Minnesota, our statewide partner, and about 80 program partners that all work together locally, regionally, and as a state to learn best practices, share um, you know, new ways and, and current ways to, to help our businesses succeed, really being that touch point uh, locally and regionally for entrepreneurs to engage. Um, and so it's the Launch Minnesota Network. I'll put a link in the chat. Um, and these are individuals in your local community that want to help entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs do not have to do this alone. And the organizations that are part of this network is a whole host of individuals and sectors. As I mentioned in our in my earlier remarks, they're higher ed institutions, they're investor communities, there's entrepreneurial support orgs, co-working spaces, SBDC offices, um, economic development agencies. So they bring all those various sectors together um, to support that fertile soil to launch new businesses. So really proud of the work that has been happening um, in this network. I also want to call out the University of Minnesota Venture Builder Program, our statewide partner. And because of the partnerships that have been forged and some of this funding, they now are offering programs that were only prior to our, their faculty and students, now to entrepreneurs across the state. Um, Together with the university and other programs, we've trained over 900 individuals in the last year and a half in the Lean Startup methodology. Um, we are leveraging their Discovery Launchpad and, and is now there's a Discovery Launchpad MN for our innovation grantees to have that one-on-one -on -one consulting to help um, wrap the, the skills needed for their team. And we're seeing um, entrepreneurs being able to accelerate at a faster pace. So just want to uh, applaud the work of our um, organizations across the state. And now I want to talk about our small business assistance office. Um, this is led by Charles, who I think will be on, the, is on this call. This office helps reduce the expense of starting a business in terms of money, time, experience, and uh, that lost opportunity for startups and established businesses by offering individual consultation services along with a comprehensive series of business guidebooks. All of this is free. I'm going to put in the chat when, I, when I'm done speaking uh, a link. They've, they've created some incredible YouTube videos that really just uh, take snippets of these guidebooks with really useful information. I'll also share their phone number that you can reach out to at any time for business questions and their email address. 
Um, this is a really talented group in the small business uh, division of, of DEED who is there every single day um, waiting to answer your questions. The other, um, the other program that I'd like to talk about that I, I just mentioned too is our small business development centers, the SBDCs. This is also a statewide network. They have nine different regions, but are represented in all those Launch Minnesota uh, networks. They provide professional experience, guidance for pre-venture startups and, and startup stage businesses, as well as established businesses. Uh, this is free. Their consultants have a wide breadth of knowledge. They're really the first go-to place that we see uh, throughout the state to be, get this one-to-one -one consulting, uh, whether that is needing marketing help, finance, you know, help with your financial statements, um, a plethora of uh, resources that their consultants can bring in to help uh, your business uh, proceed. So there's more information there. I'll also share their website in our chat. Um, so let's see, I think that is it for our overview uh, piece. Is there any questions that anyone would like to ask for, for further clarity? And these were just some of the programs that we have discussed today. So I will stop sharing. Yeah. You lied for mention and maybe you put the link in the chat but i forgot to mention that launch minnesota's application uh is applications are open and we have a new portal that uh, makes it more user friendly so that's at launch minnesota so that's where you can go and there's a recap as far as the eligibility as well as where you can actually apply for a launch minnesota thank you nyla program. all right i do see uh some questions in the chat. I'm going to need these. <laughs> um, the one question is, would Launch Minnesota be appropriate for a beginning micro enterprise that is black and women owned that is focusing on developing tools and cur curricula to address racial equity for Minnesota employers? Um, we would need more information about that. And earlier in the chat, I did put a uh, checklist for eligibility. So if you'd want to walk through that, um, you, you might be able to, to tell uh, if there's a fit there. But some of the other programs that were discussed today might also be a really good fit for your efforts. And um, the another question about do you offer one to one consultations uh, for more detailed information on her business? And yes, we do. Um, you see Charles, my colleague with the SBAO office, the SBDC offices. I meet with entrepreneurs every day uh, to try to help navigate their journey. And so do my other colleagues that are, are part of the panel today. So reach out to 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 any of us and um, I'm happy. Uh, if you reach out to me, I, I can get you to the right people. Any other questions? Our panelists were just so um, informative. You left no questions. Is there anything that any of you would like to add that you weren't able to provide during your your session. Charles, I see that you're joining us. Is there anything, uh, I, I did go over SBAO, but I, I don't know if there's other things that you'd like to, to no, add. I, I, I did hear your uh, presentation on the SBAO and uh, I, uh, I'm certainly pleased with that. And I would tell everyone that uh, we welcome their calls, uh, emails to us. Uh, the only thing we ask is that you be mindful of the volume of uh, business that we get. Uh, we get upwards of 30,000 inquiries a year. So uh, necessarily, our, uh, our assistance tends to be very transactional. If you have uh, questions that you think are going to be, as the previous uh, inquiry stated, very granular, uh, my suggestion is you take those rather to the Small Business Development Center uh, that can devote more time and effort to them. Uh, 
but for transactional questions that you think you can answer uh, in one or two contacts, by all means, uh, do come to the Small Business Assistance Office. If we can't do it, we'll put you on to whoever can. Thank you, Charles, for that clarification. And there's another another question about what um, what counts as an innovative business model or product. And as that check checklist kind of walks you through, it, it's in our statutes with our legislators that Launch Minnesota is really focusing on high growth um, startups. So what that means is most of them have intellectual property or applying uh, for some sort of patents that it would be not dependent on an individual, uh, that it would be able to be scaled globally overnight. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, also, it, it, it's not uh, a business service uh, where you're providing direct service for someone or it's not dependent on that person. It's not a bricks and mortar business. Sometimes it's easier to describe what it's not uh, th than what it is, but happy to talk through more individually um, if, if you feel like your businesses might not qualify before you go through the, the time and energy to fill out our grant application, would much rather help you screen that on the front end to save you time. And once again, you've just learned about a lot of other programs that we have um, that could, could help. And I'm going to put this matrix back up on the screen just so you see where your business is and... Um, where this might be the most helpful. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Here. All right. Wonderful. And I did put the Launch Minnesota email in there. Um, please reach out to us with any other questions. And we will, this is a quiet group. It's a Friday morning. Maybe everyone needs to fill up their coffee mug. <laughs> and uh, it's been a full week of sessions and activities. Once again, though, as I, I put in the chat, um, everything can be found on our website. Um, oops, I've now lost. Everything can be found on uh, the Launch Minnesota website. Let's see where that is. Right here, all the programs that we talked about, all the links, all the contact names. We we know Deed is a, a large agency that offers a spectrum of services and programs. Um, and this is uh, one way that to help you navigate the, the tremendous resources that our state offers. Neela, there was another question in the chat about whether there's a downtown revitaliz revitalization restaurant grant. Um, Charles, do you want to take that? Uh, only to say there is. It's um, an SBA grant, but I I don't know enough about it to comment. Uh, um, when last I heard, I thought the program had expired, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question. I think that I heard that they used all their funds. Yeah, I, they used up all the money. So if there's an established restaurant, though, the Main Street, COVID relief grants through the state are open right now through the 29th. If there are eligible businesses for that, you can look those up. And I will uh, look up those links and put them in the chat. You know, um, I, I we will stay on for a while longer if, if questions arise. Uh, but I just want to, you know, maybe close by saying that we're working really hard in Minnesota to make sure that our entrepreneurs have that supportive ecosystem and that you have a, a, a central touch point to get the answers that you need. And uh, Minnesota, this is the place to be starting and scaling a business. It's better than any other state 
to be for business survival rates. We're number one across the nation. And so you're in the right state and uh, don't feel alone in your journey uh, with our state and our partners across uh, the state, corner to corner. We want to see our entrepreneurs succeed and, and continue to grow. So we thank you for joining us today. Uh, we you have all the links in the chat of how to find any of us, and we will make sure that we can can get the answers that you need. Neela, there's one more question that I'm seeing here in the in the uh, chat, and are most of these based on where the founders live or where the business is registered? Um, and that would be program specific, right? Uh, I mean, it would. Almost all, I think almost all of these programs we require that the owner live and have the business in Minnesota. That would, it's the unusual program that doesn't have that requirement. And and my part would be only there's some for Greater Minnesota, those outside of the Twin Cities that you'd have a, um, maybe some eligibility for some other programs. Chinwei, were you going to say something? I was going to say angel tax credit might be different. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, oh, I'm seeing where they said even if you're registered as a Delaware C Corp, the uh, for Launch Minnesota anyways, you can be registered as a C Corp, but you also have to be registered as a business in Minnesota. And so it depends on your headquarters needs to be here in Minnesota and your operation. So again, that's program specific to Launch Minnesota. Um, other programs more, more uh... that's also with the angel they can be uh registered with the, as a delaware c corp but um they they must be headquartered and operate in minnesota and there's another question here could you speak to how deeds programs view public benefit corporations anyone want to take that And, and maybe um, Molly, if you want to verify, you know, kind of add some clarity of uh, in what aspect. Is that an eligibility or? I think most of our programs require that you be for profit and public benefit corps would still be a for profit structure. So um, should be fine. Great. Thank you, Drew. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of these knowledgeable panelists. I don't know that there are any benefits one way or the other. Anyone else want to address that LLC versus Public Benefit Corp? I don't. Can't. Charles might have some insight on that. Well, I, that's that's an unusual choice, the LLC versus the PBC. Uh, you don't usually get it framed in those terms that. Uh, people who do LLCs um, are, uh, in many cases, not much interested in the public benefit piece of the structure. Uh, so I, uh, I guess I'm not quite sure how, how to answer that. Uh, but uh, that, I guess I, I don't know the answer to that. I need to know a little bit more about what the intention would be in setting up the public benefit corporation uh, or doing the LLC. In other words, what you're going to make, do, or sell, and for what purpose. So give us a call or let, let us know about that, and we'll try and give you a more direct answer. And the, the number in the email for the SBAO office that Charles leads is in the chat. I can put that in again for you, Molly. Um, and then there was a, a question about uh, being a, applying for a grant for an online business. Um, we would just need to know more about what that online business is. And what you know, what unique problem you're solving? What's that novel solution that you're creating to see if it's eligible for our innovation grants? We just also need more details. Okay, we're going to give it another minute, and then we'll close this session. But once again, we, we are, are grateful that you joined us. 
and hopefully you have uh, some more tools and some resources that you didn't have earlier this morning. Um, and I'm glad that you were able to meet, meet the individuals behind these programs that work every day to try uh, to support uh, your business and our, our state's economy. Uh, I have been uh, so impressed with my colleagues at DEED uh, navigating a global pandemic. And so um, you're in uh, these individuals um, just do tremendous service for our state and it's an honor to work with them. So I think with that, I thank all of you for being panelists and taking time today to share about your incredible programs. And I thank the attendees that came and your thoughtful questions. Um, thank you for being part of Twin Cities Startup Week 2021. Uh, maybe next year we'll all be in person, which we would prefer, uh, but at least this was a way to get some information out to all of you. So um, happy Friday. I hope you enjoy the weekend and uh, thank you for joining us today.